Hello, hello, and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm gonna to talk about all of my favorite books from 2022. So in addition to discussing my favorite books of the year, I wanted to share some of my stats from Goodreads about my reading habits this year. By the way, if you don't use Goodreads and you use something else to track your reading, I would love to know what it is. I have tried to use Storygraph in the past, and it really, I don't know, it just didn't gel with me, but I'm willing to give it another go in 2023. But if you also have something else, then I would love to give it a try. As of today, which is December 24th, I have read 185 books. I am currently in the middle of three more, so hopefully I'll be able to get to it like around 190 for the year. I will return with more updates uh, early in the new year with that, but I have read just over 64,000 pages, which I think is actually sort of low because I DNF'd a good chunk of books this year, which I never count towards my goal if I didn't finish it. I should, I, maybe next year I will do like a DNF pile so I can still kind of count the pages read, but, and it's just like, it never happened. So as far as my um, tallies or whatever for the year. So eh, next year we'll give it a try. The shortest book I read was Resting Scrooge Face by Megan Quinn, which was 80 pages. It was just this cute little novella. I really enjoyed it. It's on Kindle Unlimited. So if you have that, I mean, it's a fun little one, although Christmas will be over by the time this is posted, but if you just want a cute little romance, it's definitely good there. The longest book I read was 1122-63 by Stephen King, which is 849 pages. Favorite book of all time. I could talk about it forever, but I won't because I'm pretty sure I've already done that on this channel more than once. So let's go ahead and get into my favorite books of 2022. So to make this list, I had gone through my Goodreads and just written down every book that could like potentially be in the top whatever, just that like I really, really loved. And I came up with like 15 books. I'm not making this video about 15. I narrowed it down to a top five, but I do want to give a shout out to another five that were kind of like in the mix and, you know, honorable mentions, so to speak. So the first one is Tomorrow and Tomorrow and Tomorrow by Gabrielle Zebin. This is about two friends who meet in an unlikely circumstance and bond over a love of video games. It spans through a long period of time where they develop their own video game, go into business together, and you don't really have to have a good understanding of video games to love it because I don't, and I did. <laughs> the next honorable mention is The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue by V.E. Schwab. I did a whole reading vlog on this, but it is about a girl who makes a deal with the devil to live forever, but no one ever remembers her. I don't think I need to explain much more than that. Incredibly popular, and that one was definitely one of my top books of the year. Sorry, the sun is starting to do that thing again where it just, you know, wants to move all over my face. But the next one is Sea of Tranquility by Emily St. John Mendel. This is a book that I'm not even going to try to explain because it is very much speculative fiction, but if you are into like kind of weird books, <laughs> highly recommend, so, so good. My next honorable mention is Yellow Wife by Sadeka Johnson. I know I spoke about this one as well in another video, but it is about a woman who lives on a plantation. She's biracial and she ends up getting sent to this other sort of uh, slave camp when she turns 18 and it was just a gorgeous, beautiful, perfect story, and everyone should read it. And the last one before I get into my top five favorites is Bad Blood by John Carreyrou. This is about Elizabeth Holmes and Theranos, and he's the one that kind of broke the whole story about how she was didn't know what she was doing, she didn't have this technology, and if you have any interest in that kind of case or like just scams, <laughs> gotta read it. It's so good. I read it after I watched the TV show The Dropout on Hulu and like I'd sort of been following the case but not really and then I became obsessed and I started listening to The Dropout podcast and the kind of like final chapter of this whole saga has just happened in real life so I won't spoil it if you don't already know but definitely a good one to check out if you're into true crime. So now for my top five. Also, I'm so sorry about the sun. I feel like I always just choose to make videos at the worst time of day when it's just 
Blah, right in my face. Anyways, the first book I want to talk about is The Violin Conspiracy by Brendan Slocum. This book came out back in February and it did get a, an okay amount of hype. It was a Good Morning America pick for February last year. This year? Wow. Okay. <laughs> I'm already ready for 2023, I guess. But yes, it was the uh, Good Morning America pick in February 2022. And it is about a guy, he's black, and he wants to be a violinist. And he, you know, it starts in the past where he is trying to figure out how he can do this because he can't afford his own instrument and his family is not very supportive except for his aunt. And they all are just like, you need to get a real job. And apparently, something I didn't know, and um, this is kind of semi-autobiographical, just in the sense that like the author is a violinist and he is black and he went through some of this same stuff. But apparently classical music is a lot of racism. I didn't know. So this he's got all these odds stacked against him and then he finds his violin in his grandmother's attic and it was his uh, great-grandfather's fiddle and he somehow finds out that it's this incredibly famous, like incredibly valuable instrument. It's worth like over a million dollars. So as the main character, Ray, has sort of begun to get some fame, the descendants of the family that enslaved his ancestors are claiming the violin belongs to them. And he ends up entering this huge competition in Russia. I'm sure it's a real, the Tchaikovsky competition. It goes missing. And so it's this whole thing. It's an incredible story and a great crime novel, but it's honestly about so much more than that. A lot of the story is spent on the origins of the violin, how it came into his possession and how Ray became a violinist. And it really makes the violin almost its own character, which was really cool. It also makes it really clear how much of a loss this is when it is stolen from Ray. Like you feel it too. <laughs> and despite having no knowledge of classical music, I felt like I could still envision like and hear, not envision. <laughs> I felt like I could still like feel the music when it was being described. It was just so well written. And when I looked at my Goodreads and Instagram reviews from this book that I wrote back in February or January, I predicted that this would be one of my favorite books of the year. And look at that, it was. The next book in my top five is Meant to Be by Emily Giffen. I have been a huge fan of Emily Giffen since I was in high school and her first book came out. I read every single book by her and this is absolutely like in my top three of hers. This is a little different than a lot of hers. This is kind of a historical fiction based on some real sort of events. It's heavily inspired by JFK Jr. and Carolyn Bissett and their romance, but it's definitely, it's its own thing. I mean, you can see where it's very similar, but they definitely, she takes creative liberties and you know, these are completely different characters. It's not like they are given their names or anything. It is just an absolutely beautiful love story and I love the ending, it's just perfect. I like romance, I wouldn't say I love reading romance, but this was absolutely beautiful and the relationship that's described in this book felt so real and so genuine and I was so invested in it, which I feel like I don't necessarily get that. Even with romances I enjoy, I felt so invested in their relationship. I also love that Emily Giffen's writing never feels tropey, even though it's, you know, definitely romance, it just feels very organic and like the relationships are very real. I, I know I've said that already, but that's definitely how I feel. If you have read any Emily Giffen and enjoyed her writing, this is a must read. Next up in my top five is Remarkably Bright Creatures by Shelby Van Pelt. This is another one that I wrote in my review that this is gonna be in my top books of the year, and here we are, which is just fun because I don't really like go back and read reviews when I'm making this list. And so it's fun that like I know myself so well that I just already knew what was gonna be my favorite. This is about a widow who works as a night cleaner at an aquarium. She doesn't need the money, she just likes to have something to do, and she ends up forming a friendship with an octopus named Marcellus. That is basically all I knew about this book when I started reading it, but it is just a beautiful like story about the human spirit and different connections, um, relationships between people, and I just loved Marcellus. He's just the best character. This is categorized, I guess, as literary fiction, but it never really felt like highbrow or like it was inaccessible. 
while it's a little bit fantastical, I would call it maybe a little bit of like magical realism just in the octopus thing. But if you have enjoyed like the House in the Cerulean Sea or the Gunkle, it kind of has the same vibes. Definitely pick this one up. It was so, so good. I also listened to the audiobook and I really enjoyed it. So I definitely recommend that if you're into audiobooks. Next up is Mad Honey by Jodi Picoult and Jennifer Finney Boylan. This was one that I've discussed, I think, earlier in one of my monthly wrap ups, but I'm happy to talk about it again. So this is about a woman who has escaped an abusive marriage and she has moved up to her hometown where she grew up and taken over her father's bee farm. I guess that's what it's called. <laughs> Beekeeping farm, whatever. Her world is rocked when her son is accused of killing his girlfriend. Whew. So that's kind of where she's at with, is this abusive tendency genetic? Is my son a monster? And the twist in the middle will blow your mind. I did not see it coming. I hope that if you haven't read this, that no one spoiled it for you because my jaw hit the floor. It's so wild. And this book is so good. <sighs> if you've read jo Jodi Picoult, you know what kind of books she writes and just how they're so hard hitting. And she does her research. I mean, this book is so well researched. You would think that she is a beekeeper herself. Such a good book, must read. All right, and I don't know if I saved the best for last, but this is definitely one that I know people haven't heard of as much. I don't know why, this book is incredible, and that is The Hop by Diana Clark. So this is about a woman who comes from like a rural town in New Zealand. She has a like a very poor family, a single mom, and she basically finds out that like she can make something of herself as a sex worker. So she leaves her town in New Zealand and moves to Nevada to work at the famous brothel, The Hop, bunny ranch sort of situation. And it's all told as interviews and from like all kinds of different people in her life and herself and from the time she's a kid and a teen all the way up to present day. And it's very empowering it's so interesting and the different perspectives, the twists and turns that it takes um, because she becomes this like very famous sex worker. And it's just such a great story. I honestly don't know why I haven't heard that much about it. It came out back in May, I believe. And I was just, sh I was like absolutely shaken by how much I loved it. This is definitely one of my all time favorite books now as well. The author did such a good job of showing how sex work can be like very empowering and very feminist, but also showing like the real realities of that kind of work. There was also a lot of emphasis on sisterhood between the girls at the brothel and a lot of diversity. There was a trans uh, worker, there were a lot of different races and just sexual identities and it was just a really great story and it was so just captivating. I could not put this book down. For those of you who love short chapters like I do, such short chapters, it was so hard to put this down because you were just like, eh, well, this is just like another page and a half. Okay, yeah, I gotta read one more. So good. I mean, if you pick up one book from this video, make it this one, please. And there you have it, my favorite books of 2022. I can't believe that we are almost in 2023. There's so many exciting releases to look forward to. I can't wait to share some with you that I have already gotten copies of and been able to read. It's been so nice to be on YouTube. I feel so welcomed by so many other um, channels and I appreciate your support so much. It means so much to me that I was able to get 100 subscribers and I hope that in the future I just keep growing. If you have any suggestions for videos you like to see, the types of videos you prefer, I would love to hear your comments because I am having a blast doing this for myself, but I want people to watch them. So if you have any suggestions, please let me know. I am planning on getting a vlogging camera in the early new year, so that will be exciting and I can stop filming on my phone, so hopefully the quality will be a bit better. What a world. Uh, so thank you so much for watching. Thank you for subscribing if you do. If you don't, I would love it if you would. <laughs> I hope everyone has a wonderful holiday season, a happy new year, and I will see you all in 2023.